Hello, hello, hello! Hi! Ah, oh, welcome, welcome to my bar. How are you all doing? Looks like it's right about time, so we'll just hop straight in. Welcome to the bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, today we are going to be making a brand new, never before tried, maybe never again tried cocktail using only the roll of some gaming dice and a list of random ingredients that I happen to have around me. Now, I've tried to keep those ingredients pretty basic, so if you want to play along, you super can, although I will be honest with you, the last couple results have not been the sort of thing that you want to experience without a warning. So, uh, feel free to take notes, try these cocktails on your own at home, take pictures, share them online, tag me, I'm at Dungeon Barkeep on most social media platforms, Facebook, uh, well, uh, Instagram and Twitter, I should say. You can also find me at The Indecisionist, which is theindecisionist.com, and on all the different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that being said, I'm just a humble bartender here at this beautiful, well-stocked bar full of bottles that I can't quite reach because the wizard that created this portal uh, only made it go so far. But I do have all these other bottles on hand that are going to go into making a brand new cocktail today, and I'm pretty excited to find out what it's going to be because we got some pretty great uh, names on the list today. I think that's enough prelude, although I didn't hit all the things I was supposed to do, and I did it all out of order. So let's just go ahead and roll our first die of the evening, which is going to be a d4. Uh, to choose an essential mixer. So let's go ahead and hop over here. You can see we've got a, a dice tray there. Four on the D4 is juice. Uh, and I've got a couple things available to juice, including this beautiful Cara Cara orange, which I'm excited about, which uh, fades a little bit into the... There we go. Look at that beautiful Cara Cara orange. The light makes it slowly disappear as it gets closer. Uh, because the portal is finicky that way. Wizards. But anyway, so, uh, I, let's see. We might get some orange juice in here. I've also got lemons and limes and a whole selection of nectars. So, uh, let's, we'll see. We'll see. Juice is a bit of a wild card. Let's me, let's me play a little fast and loose. Uh, next is a D6. This D6 is going to select a garnet. Ooh, if I can hit the, uh, dice tray. Garnish is a one, which is Lime Twist. All right, so it looks like we're going to juice a lime and use the twist of uh, twist of lime. So that was an easy decision. Uh, that happened last week, too, where I got juice and then ended up with uh, lemon juice. But who knows? Maybe I'll juice all the citrus and make it into a medley thing. Well, who knows? Uh, next, we're going to move to a less essential mixer, something that could you, you could do without most times, but I'm not going to. Let's see what that mixer is going to be with the roll of D8. That is a 7, which on the mixer chart is Bloody Mary Mix. All right. This is uh, probably going to be the last hurrah for this beautiful Bloody Mary Mix from the Saucy Wench, uh, just based on how much is left. Um, all right. Citrus and Bloody Mary Mix. I think we've done that before, and uh, as I recall, it was just fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is pick a liquor with a D10. All right, so um, flip back over to the liquors. There we go. In the dice tray, eight. An eight on that is coffee liqueur. Oh, okay. All right. Coffee liqueur, Bloody Mary mix, and juice. Huh. Huh. All right, I'm going to have to think about that one. Um, <clears throat> wow, I really want this to turn out okay, but I am not optimistic about how I can do that. All right, uh, think of fruits that you think would go with tomato, although I, I accept that many of you are going to tell me that tomato is a fruit. I, I get that. Uh, and it is. Uh, most, most vegetables are. Uh, I know. Confusing. So, bar terms. This is going to be a D12 to decide on a bar term for us to talk about today. That is a 10, uh, which is muddle. 
All right, muddle is a really good one for today uh, because it's uh, basically where we're gonna smash some fruit into the bottom of the glass or the mixing tin, that fruit is going to become a pulp and juice and it'll get some of the rind in there. And all of that together is going to inform the drink in a different way than if we just had the juice. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have some juice. We're gonna muddle some stuff. We've got Bloody Mary mix. We've got coffee liqueur. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is gonna be a real weird one. Uh, yeah, the dice tell me what I can have, not what I want is absolutely right, Patty Smith. Uh, that is, that is absolutely true. And, uh, an agent of Enigmas, I'm glad that you're excited to see this week's cocktail because I'm not anymore. Um, oh, what effect was cool, uh, agent of Enigmas? Um, oh, the orange? Is that the cool effect? I'm not sure what you were talking about there. Uh, basil. Uh, oh, mint or basil just because. If I had any on hand, that's actually not a terrible idea. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, all right. Well, my fate is sealed. Let's kick down to the bar top cam. Oh, I haven't chosen a name. <sighs> Last roll of the night is a d20 to choose a name. I have a, hu I have a huge list of names submitted by people online, including some of you in the chat right now. Uh, Bridey, man, you continue to knock him out of the park, so thank you for that. Um, and, uh, from that list of names, uh, I have a randomized list of 20 here, assigned to 20 numbers, and we'll see which one gets chosen with the roll of this die. Five! And five on this list is its super effective screwdriver! This one's gonna drive your screws, that's for sure. Ugh. Okay, all right. Let's cut down to the bar top cam and see what kind of polish I can put on this turd. All right. So I'm gonna move these limes off to the side here. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> all right, I think what I'm gonna do is mix the coffee liqueur portion of this prior to the Bloody Mary mix. Um, let me remind myself what this Bloody Mary mix profile is like. As I recall, it's it's more of a like salsa-y profile, a little less celery forward than you might get with some others. Um, this is a spicy Bloody Mary mix specifically from the Saucy Wench. Ooh. Oh, that actually works. There's a reason those beauty ticked, uh, beauty YouTubers do it. Okay, yeah, there we go. Anyway, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of like spice and black pepper and uh, tomato-y uh, biskiness. Okay. So, all right, we'll start off by prepping our garnish because I always forget to do that and then it's hard to do once you've already cut into the lime. So here, I'm just going to, I'm encouraged by how little pith this lime seems to have. It's getting right into the meat of it, which is, which is nice. That's, that's a good sign. All right, we've got a nice long twist of lime there. Set that aside, put that over there too, just in case. Um, all right. All right, so we're doing Oh yeah, nice thin skin on that. That's gonna have a lot of juice to it. So I'll just squeeze this by hand into this uh, graduated jigger, which as some of you have identified is one of my two fa- Yeah, it's absolutely gonna drive my screws, Agent of Enigmas, you're right about that. Uh, yeah, the green screen and the orange. So that is a cool effect. If I was doing it on purpose or wanted it for something, 
I'll just have to keep that in my back pocket in case I want it. Um, all right, so super effective screwdriver. This is implying a fantasy world in which we have screws to drive. Uh, so that's fun because we haven't done a whole lot of like sci-fi elements on here in the dungeon bar keep. Uh, so I, it seems like we're going to a a space bar, which is which is always good. Uh, all right, so that lime produced half an ounce of juice. If I need more, I've got another lime on hand. But we'll go ahead and toss half an ounce of lime juice into the tin. Get that out of the way. All right, get that out of the way. Um, coffee liqueur. I might as well just bite the bullet and get that in there. Um, I'm going to go with Mr. Black. Mr. Black is a, a sweet, and I don't usually do labels, and this is two in one show. Mr. Black is a, a beautiful, um, not too sweet, cold brew coffee liqueur. Um, it's artisanally made in Australia. I really, really like it. Um, I'm going to do an ounce and a half of that because I have a feeling it's going to have to fight for supremacy with the tomatoey pepperiness of the Bloody Mary mix. So into the tin goes that. We'll go, I'm just going to go ahead and put that right under my picture. There we go. We'll just play over here with all the other stuff. Okay, so now what kind of, so we got juice. We've got our twist. We've chosen our mixer. We've got, hypothetically, this is the drink. I don't think it's going to be very good. So I want to try and save it. What other kind of juice? That's the only free space I have. I've got free play on the juice. Um, I've got peach, apricot, and plum and coconut. Pear. Hmm. <laughs> Man, I I will be honest. I am, I am a little stumped. This is going to be a space drink. That's for sure. It's gonna it's gonna be out of this world. <laughs> Um, I feel like this is going to be the kind of drink that you order at like um, uh, like a spaceport bar that serves mostly hard-bitten noir detectives, you know. Um, I'm hesitant to just say it, but I feel like I should just say what I mean is Blade Runner. Um, I f this feels like a like the sort of... Um, the sort of thing that happens in a dystopic universe like Blade Runner. Um, all right, so uh, here's what I'm going to try. I think I need something dark, sweet, and aggressive to bridge the gap between the coffee liqueur and the spiciness of the Bloody Mary mix. So the juice I'm going to add is this: ju is the juice from some dark morello cherries these are pitted sour cherries in a syrup so it comes with a you know with a with a cherry juice to it um and i'm just gonna go ahead and measure this out i really wanted that bar spoon to be helpful and it's not all right um that's probably more than i wanted All right, so we're doing half an ounce of Morello cherry syrup, so sour cherries. I think that's going to help. We'll find out if I'm right. Um, all right, so that's that. Um, 
we were going to muddle, so I'll go ahead and grab some of this lime that I juiced. And we'll muddle that in there. The idea here is that the rind is going to express some of its oils into the drink. Yeah, def it's definitely a dive. So I think the adventure that I would host to go with this cocktail is is going to be a mystery. It's going to be a space mystery. Um, and I'm picturing... Um, I'm picturing the person who serves this drink doing so as a way to get the detective's attention. You know, like... If you walk into the bar and you're you're looking for who your contact is supposed to be, it it could be easy, especially in a lot of these detective stories, to ignore the bartender and you know just be like, okay, hey, there's a bartender there. I order a drink from the bartender, and move on with your day. I think this bartender is like trying to get the attention of our hard bitten detective, and uh, has intentionally made something that is going to strike a, a chord something that's going to be very aggressive and directive uh oh a code psycho pyro brilliant idea yeah maybe there's like a code in the cocktails ingredients and and then the bartender dies as the first scene and uh and so our adventurers have come in and they're like okay we're looking for our for a thing they get this weird drink it's really gross and they're like oh okay that was a thing and then the bartender dies and they have to figure out what was in the drink to get the code for what he was trying to tell them. That's genius. I like that a lot. Well done. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Um, okay, so we've done some unholy things here. Uh, there's citrus in here, so let's shake it. Why not? Let's, let's shake it. Um, I don't know where I got the idea that you should shake drinks with citrus in them, but I did. And... Uh, it's an arbitrary rule, but so are all of them. All right, so that's nice and cold. The ice has broken up. There we go. Got a nice tight seal. There we go. That is our coffee liqueur, lime, and cherry juice. Uh, I'm going to serve this in a rocks glass. So I'm going to go ahead and do Here's our Bloody Mary mix, which I shook previously. That should be about three ounces. I say as though anybody is going to follow in my footsteps on this one. Is it weird? Yeah, it's weird. Does it look like a space drink? A little bit. Oh, I did that whole thing under my own picture. Okay, so, um, so that's what it looks like from the top. Ooh. And... Here's what it looks like from the side. So I think I got it looking kind of spacey. It's got like a distinctive ingredients thing. So you could figure out, okay, this is, uh, you know, if the, if the characters came back to it later and it was still this way, they'd have a better chance of figuring out what the ingredients are because they're striated in this way. Um, I am going to go ahead and 
mix well let's try it unmixed let's let's just see what nightmare i've created here okay i don't think i got any of the uh merry mix on that sip uh which means that i can tell you that the combination of the cherry and lime and uh and coffee liqueur is um I'm not gonna say good, but it's interesting. Um, and the brightness of that sour cherry and the lime together really are coming through against the coffee. Um, unmellowing it, I suppose you could say. Uh, hold on for just a second while I mute myself for amusement purposes. All right. Uh, so now that I've mixed it, oh, all right, it's um, it's very whatever color that is. Guys, I did it. <laughs> okay. So if you wanted to do it as part of that adventure, if that's your adventure hook is this code that's built into this weird drink that tastes funky, you'd have to do it layered the way that I did because once you get it all mixed together, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's a whole new experience. It's spicy, it's aggressively spicy, which, which is nice. The spice cuts through it's playing with the lime, the sourness of the cherry, I think cut back on the coffee aggressiveness, which allowed everything else to sort of have a space to work. And so the coffee is just sort of expressing the darker flavors, the deeper flavors of the tomato and, um, and pepper. Um, the, the mixed version almost matches my beard, says Patty Smith. I'll I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh <laughs> There it is, friends. Uh we've got a little adventure hook. We've got a, a story unfolding, and we have a brand new cocktail that while I don't know that everybody's gonna want it. I would certainly drink it on, I'm going to finish it. I mean, <laughs> I, I'll drink it. It's, it's not bad. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Well, friends, we did it. We made it to the end. What an exciting time to be alive. I want to thank you all for joining me here for this uh, cocktail adventure today. I hope you had a great time. I know I certainly did. I'm surprised at how well that went. And speaking of things I'm surprised at how well they're going, it is the one year anniversary of TTRPG Pickup Con. It's a free gaming convention that I run by my darn self. Uh, and that means that uh, I'm not beholden to any other companies. You don't have to worry about sponsorship or me selling your contacts to anybody. It's a free gaming event because I like gaming and I want to give people opportunity to do that. So you can check that out on my website at indecisionist.com. There's a link in the doobly-doo. You can also go to ttrpgpickupcon.com, which just redirects you to indecisionist.com, because um, that's how that works. It's a really good time, and there are a bunch of games with spaces open. So tell your nerdy friends, tell your nerdy self, get yourself a game. It's a couple hours this weekend. We've got times all throughout the, the weekend, including at 1 a.m. Uh, Central Time for people who are across the ocean and want something that's, you know, a little bit more reasonable for them. It's going to be a really, really fun experience. So definitely check that out. Uh, I'm, I know I'm going to have a really good time this weekend, and I hope you can too. Until then, and until next time, friends, Drink adventurously. <laughs>